wonky. So like every time I try to center the clay, it like shakes the whole thing. Um, that's the biggest issue. It's not actually the wheel. How many times do you have to reshake? Well, because I'm not very good, quite a few. <laughs> but if you're good, you can make a, a shake quite quickly. I think we're going a bit too fast and we're flopping and we've got a disc here. We can also like use the heat gun as well to cheat a little. So here I, I haven't kept the walls the same thickness. So what's happened is the bottom is too thick and the top is too thin because I'm not concentrating properly. And then it kind of like has a weak spot and then that just causes it to collapse. They're like people that are professionals, which is not me. Um, so the act of like bringing it up is called pulling and they can make like a big ass piece, like this tall or something. You can't even see how tall, like this tall. Um, and only pull a couple of times, like you have to be quite strong. You have to know what you're doing, obviously. Um, and that's not me yet. That's fine. That's the whole point of this, I guess, as well. So I just practice. Practice, practice, practice. And also I don't feel comfortable going at a hundred percent speed because I know I'm gonna get splatter everywhere. I don't really want to get splatter, but also you kind of have to go at a hundred percent speed to make sure that it's super centered. Yeah, definitely. The thinner it is definitely the more likely it is to break when you fire it. But also even when you use it, like if you've got something that's very thin, um, you're gonna be really delicate with it as well. So yeah, no, not 100% speed yet. Kind of like when I'm in the pottery studio when I use the wheels, I'm not as worried about making a mess because it's my place and I have to do the cleaning up for like everything, I'm a bit more <laughs> inclined to make sure that I'm trying to stay as drip free as possible. But I do clean up at the pottery studio. It's just that they have all the equipment and stuff to clean up as well. Whereas to me, it's a bit more of a drag. Sorry, I'm looking for a needle tool, which is here in my nicely organized space, which I'm very happy with. So here I can feel that there's an air bubble, but I don't remember where it was on the wheel. So I'm just gonna like stab everywhere. And then that will get rid of the air bubble. This is not the scientific method. This is the lazy ass method of getting rid of shit. I do not recommend. This is not professional. center again and all those little holes will be filled up. But yeah, this one guy that I learned to like throw off the hump from, he is amazing, like so good. Um, he can throw like huge pieces in like next to no time or he can make things that are like exactly the same forever and ever and ever and they just look gorgeous and I'm definitely fangirling over this dude because he's just really really good but also like it's his job which makes sense for the more time and the more effort obviously that you spend into something the better you're going to get at it right Also, I haven't really practiced this uh, throwing off the hump thing, which is what this is called, like when you make lots of pieces from one big hump of clay in a while. So I'm still kind of getting back to basics with it. Yeah. Oh, that's an air bubble pop. I'm not sure if you heard it, but it made like a little clip. Probably didn't wedge the clay very well. Again, I blame the table. 
because the table's kind of poo poo and very wibble-wobble. It's good for storing stuff on. Not so good if you're wanting to make a very sturdy table so you can bang lots of things on it. Okay. It's good enough for now. And maybe that means that if I can throw with not a hell, not a hundred percent good equipment, then that means that when I get the really nice equipment, maybe one day when I'm like 60, then it'll be a three EVs. Also, this wheel doesn't have a foot pedal, so I'm having to like manually elbow it. That's true, comparing it to your previous work, that is very true, but right now this is still shittier than my previous work, but that's okay, because it's a new technique, and I'm learning, and I'm having fun and chatting to you guys. Are there certain clays that are less likely to shatter under fire? So, I'm not sure what you mean by this, so I'm going to answer by not answering your question. Um, I'm not sure if a politician. Uh, so, Clay is usually divided by the